Hey there guys, welcome back to Artifact Studios and you're watching Tutorial Tuesday Season 2 about Glitch Up. Before I'm gonna start this video, I wanna apologize for not doing a sound design Saturday video this week. Um, or last Saturday I mean. Um, I've got a good reason for it. In the past week, I've, well, I've been down quite a lot because I've lost a really good friend. Um, she was still very young and a lot of, you know, me and a lot of my friends knew her really well. And even though I wasn't seeing her that much anymore, every time I spoke to her, it just felt like good friends. You know, we did become really good friends throughout the years. And, you know, to lose her is really, really difficult. So I didn't feel like making a video last Saturday. And I don't really think that it was that well strange that I wasn't feeling like making a video um it struck me pretty hard and that's just how the way it is and you guys will have to deal with it I I don't have any other explanation for this So yeah, um, on to today's video. It's a little bit of a weird kind of bridge that I'm making now, but I've, I felt the need to tell you at least what is happening and why I haven't made a video last Saturday. Um, yesterday, I spent about five hours recording the video that I was going to be uploading today. And that video was going to be about making the drop. I was going to basically just going to arrange all the sounds that I have into a drop that sounds good. Now, I've spent about five hours recording videos. I think I recorded about three different videos. And to be quite honest, I didn't like any of them. And sometimes you have this kind of tracks, you know, you... You are at a particular point, you need to make something, and you just can't come up with something that sounds good. So yeah, um, I did make something, and I want to show you, um, you know, I had this kind of bass sound. And I also have this bass sound. Now. I found out that when I layer these two on top of each other, it sounds pretty good. But, to be honest, this structure, this particular phrase, um, it does sound good, but it didn't lead me to anything that, you know, really inspired me. Um, sometimes you have these moments where you're like fiddling around for two three hours and when you look back after those two three hours you're like well this basically just sounds like shit i mean this is not worth three hours of work it's that simple um so i found out that starting with the drop is maybe not the best approach for this track you know sometimes you have this kind of things um i can start a track with a drop if that inspires me, um, sometimes I start by making all the individual instruments like I did with this particular track. And then I try to rearrange everything so that it becomes a full track. But sometimes those methods just don't work. And you need to find a different approach to creating the track. Now most of the time I would just leave the track alone, start something new and I'll probably find this particular project um, in about a couple of months from now and I would continue making the track um, if it inspires me at that point in time. But since I'm doing a tutorial season, I can hardly just say like, oh well, I'm going to do something else and I'm going to leave this project for a couple of months because I can't do that, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a different approach for this track. I'm going to try to lay down the structure and then I'm going to build the track from start to finish. So I'm going to start with the intro and build up towards the drop because that way I'll know what I already have 
and how it builds up to the drop. And then I can sort of like visualize in my head how I want that drop to sound. Right now, when I start with making a drop, I don't know what is going to be in front of the drop, which is going to make the whole process of creating the drop a little bit more difficult, especially when you come to the point where you need to match a build-up or intro with a drop. And sometimes that can give, well, a little bit of problems. So to counterattack that, I'm going to start with the intro and build my way through the track. And first I want to lay down a structure. Now, I know a lot of people have problems with creating structures for their music. Like, how are you going to build your track? Where is what going to be? And to show you how you do that, I've basically loaded up two different tracks. Um, one is a track by myself. It's going to be released, well, fairly soon. And I've also got another track, which is by Cohen Sound. I'm not going to play this track. You can see it's the track Sly Fox. If you want to hear this track, go to YouTube, SoundCloud, search for Cohen Sound, Sly Fox, and you can hear the track. I'm not going to play this because that would give me a little bit of problems with copyright and stuff like that. And I don't want to do that. So I looked up a track of my own and I was quite amazed by the fact that the structures of these two tracks are, well, pretty much similar. Um, this track, I've started making this track about a year ago, maybe longer, I don't know. It was before Sly Fox was released um, that I already started making this track. And this is one of those tracks that has been laying on my hard disk for about, well, maybe a year. And I found this project and it really inspires me. And so I finished it and it's now going to be released. Um, so I just loaded up these two and I found out that the structure is really similar. We can clearly see that the Cohen soundtrack has a 16 bar intro. And this is like the part right for the drop, you know, where he sort of like makes the transition between the intro and the drop. And, you know, he does it with this kind of sound, you know, that sound, that kind of thing. Um, now I did the same thing, but I did like that. Um. Both tracks have a 16-bar intro. You can clearly see that. Um, so, I can, for instance, go to the first part right here and say add locator, and I'm going to call this intro, like that. Um, so when we look at this particular point, 17 bars, or the seventh start of the 17 bar, um, we have the drop kicking in. You can clearly see this in the Cohen soundtrack. I mean, it's the biggest part in the entire track. Um, so the drop kicks in right here. So I'm going to add a locator. And I'm going to call this drop number one. So now when we compare the Cohen soundtrack and my own track, we can see there's a little bit of a difference. Cohen sound uses an eight bar drop right here which then goes into another 8-bar drop, but which is a different variation. It's sounding different than the first part, the first 8 bars. After that, he goes back to that first 8 bars, which are then followed again by these 8 bars. So, in total, he makes a 32-bar drop. For my track, when we start to look at it, I use a 16 bar drop where the second 8 bars of these 16 bars are a little bit different but they still follow the same kind of pattern and then I use another 16 bars but these 16 bars sound a little bit different from the first 16 bars. So that's the main difference between the two tracks. I mean he uses a drop that is 
constructed out of 8 bar sections, while I have a drop that is constructed out of 16 bar sections. Um, this is something to think about, you know, what do you want? Obviously, the 8 bar sections give a different kind of feeling than the 16 bar sections. So, that's something you can think about. Um, I can also see that right here at the start of bar number 49, um, the breakdown kicks in. So I'm going to call this breakdown. Then, right here at the start of bar 65, the drop kicks in again. So I'm going to create another locator, and I'm going to call this drop 2. Um, then, right here at bar 97, we have the outro. Um, so I'm going to put that here, outro. You can see for my track, I don't really have an outro at the moment, but I'm going to add one. Um, I'm still thinking about how to end this track. So, that is the basic structure of the track. Now I can add a couple of more locators. Um, add one here. Call this drop one variation. Like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Drop two variation. And now I can basically show you a little bit what I've done. Um, we start with the intro. You know, building up a little bit with the filter. Um, then right here, the low frequencies of the drums kick in. Um, then these last four bars are somewhat like a really short build up. Tell you the things don't get hot. Um, and those lead into the first drop. Now the first drop um, sounds quite interesting. It's a little bit of a weird kind of drop, but I like it, and that's why I use it. Um, that first section of the drop ends um, ends a little with a little bit of kind of a fill sound, which then goes into the second part of the first drop. And this second part is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you how the first part sounds and then the second part. So this is the first part and then followed by this little fill part right here and then the second part. You can hear in that second part that the high, sort of high pitch synth becomes even more higher. Um, it's basically played an octave above what it already played at in the first section of the drop. So that's the little bit of variation. Now Cohen's sound does it a little bit different. In the first section of his drop he has, well, a longer sustained bass sound. And then in that second part, that second section, he switches it up to shorter bass notes and then when he comes to the part where I have labeled it as drop on variation he drops it back down to those longer sustained uh, bass notes and then he gets another section of short bass notes so for me it's different I have that first section with the high pitch synth that is gonna be higher in the second part and then on um, the second 16 bars of the drop, I'm totally switching it up. So that's a little bit of a different thing, but the overall structure is still the same. The, the drop itself still takes up 32 bars, and that's the exact same measure as the Cohen soundtrack. So I end that first drop with a little bit of a different kind of thing, and then I drop into the second well, the second section of the drop, like, where it really, well, switches up. Um, I'll give you a little listen. Now, 
after that we get the breakdown. Um, my breakdown is really simple. Just a synth, a bass sound, and some stabby synth stuff. It's not really that interesting, but it worked and it made this track sound better. Um, then we get this second part where some sort of a, well, it's basically a distorted clavinet, but it sounds really much like a bass synth. Um, it kicks in right here. And we then build up again. This is like a longer build up. I mean, it is a breakdown, but it also acts like a longer kind of build up. Um, building up towards this second drop, which is basically the same drop as the drop I use here. Um, there's not really any change between these two drops because I didn't feel like um, I had to, you know, sometimes um, these drops are already pretty complicated and there's a lot of stuff going on and sometimes when that is the case you don't really have to make a totally different second drop um, and just reusing the first drop can sometimes already be good enough. So that's what I did for this one, I basically repeated that drop and then I added, well, this outro, um, I still need to make the outro for this particular track. Um, I can show you how it ends right now. You know, it's some, it, it does sound good. I mean, listen. I do think I need to add a little bit more. Um, so this first drop, um, especially the variation part, you can hear this. It uses an 8 note hi-hat, while this second part uses a 16 note hi-hat. It's really subtle in the background, but it does give this second part of the drop a little bit more a little bit more pace, a little bit more energy, and that, you know, helps to make this drop sound just a little bit different. Um, so that is how I would structure a track and how you can analyze other tracks. Um, I advise you to just take a track that you really, really like and really like the structure of and look it up, load it up in Ableton, match the project tempo to the track that you are analyzing and try to find out what did the artist do, how did he structure the track, and how did he, well, basically created it um, into a final track. And when you analyze these tracks and compare them to tracks you've made in the past, you can really see the sort of difference that is between it. Um, now, I think that's it for today's video. Um, I don't really have a lot of time today. Um, and to be quite honest, I really don't feel like making a video today. So, um, I hope you guys can deal with it. Um, I work really hard on my website right now, writing a lot of articles. Um, there's going to be a really, really helpful article coming up on my website. It's going to be the super detailed guide for new music producers. Um, it's basically just going to explain a lot of things about equipment both hardware and software, um, how you choose which software you're going to use, how you choose which plugins you're going to use, and just going to give you a brief demonstration, a brief explanation of what everything is and what you might need as a music producer, which is just starting out. So that was it for this week's video. I know it's a little bit short. I know I didn't really explain any production stuff, you know, I basically just showed how you make the structure of a track. Um, the reason for this is that my my head is still not empty and my head is still filled with the emotions I have from losing a friend. So I don't really think that right now I can come up with anything good. So I'm going to skip that for this week. Um, I hope you guys can understand and I hope that you're going to look forward to next week 
Um, I'm gonna do some intro stuff in the next week, lay down the intro and build it up towards this first drop. Um, probably two, three weeks from now, we'll be creating the drop that you guys probably all been waiting for. Um, yeah, if you understand this, I really thank you a lot. Um, I hope you like my videos. If you want to see more videos about these kind of tracks, subscribe to this channel. Um, if you want to have any of the presets that I created in these videos, you can get them now at my website. They are available for all VIP members. And as a VIP member, you get more than just the presets. The presets is sort of like an extra little thing that you get. But the main thing what you get as a VIP member is um, you get access to a couple of different sections on my website. One, you get access to a series of articles I have currently have written to, but there's going to be a lot more to come, which are called Plugin Talk. In these particular articles, I write about a particular plugin. I go through all the different parameters and I explain what they are and what they do. Um, I'll also explain why I like the plugin or why I don't like the plugin. You also get access to a new VIP forum section. Um, on that particular forum you can request particular things for the VIP section and you can also post your music there. Um, it's basically the same as the normal category that I created for sharing your music and getting some feedback. Although, in that section, I don't give feedback to everyone. Um, I only give feedback to a track when I feel like I have something worthy to say about the track. Um, you also get feedback from other members in that section. And this new section is only available for VIP members. And I will give you really in-depth feedback on your track. So if you want to get really in-depth feedback, you can post your track in that section. Um, I cannot promise you that I'm going to do feedback in one or two days, but I'll give every VIP member that posts his track in that new VIP section, I'll give them all the feedback they deserve. Um, you also get um, access to the downloads, of course, which I already told you, but there's not just presets in that category. The biggest, biggest thing about the download section are a series of Ableton effect racks and instrument racks that I have created in the past and these downloads can be used in Ableton Live and they will really speed up your workflow. Um, I can show you what I have, I think, let's see. So I can show you what these racks are and what they do. Um, this is the collection of the racks that you're going to get when you subscribe as a VIP member. Um, these tracks of, or these racks are really, really useful for doing particular kind of things. Um, I can show you what they do to basically just give you a little brief explanation what you get as a VIP member. Um, let's load up a loop or anything. Let's just go to Vengeance and load up a particular loop. That's good enough. So I load up that loop. Bring the volume down a little bit. Let's solo this track and let's loop it. So now we have this loop. Let's set the warp mode to beats. So that's our loop. 
Um, I can then go to my racks. Um, the first one is a bass bus rack. Um, this one is basically just um, a rack that you use to add some compression to your bass group track and also apply some saturation and some side chaining. So that's really helpful, but it's it doesn't really need any more explanation. Um, when you load this up in a track, it's basically just set up with macro controls, like you can see. Um, I can change these controls, add some more compression by bringing up this one, add some saturation. I can add side chaining with this one, and I can define how the side chaining is going to be applied. I only need to select a particular trigger track, and then this knob will do its thing. Um. The second one is the Distortify. Now the Distortify is a little bit more interesting because it's basically a distortion module that I've created. So on the default settings it sounds like this. Nothing is applied. And now I can basically add in multiple kinds of distortion to make this sound different. Now, every one of these um, can be used together, you know, you can blend multiple kinds of distortion to create a really interesting sound. You can even automate these things. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration of how all of, the, <coughs> how all of them sound like. So you can really hear that you can really destroy your sound with this particular one. Um, it also comes with a filter. It's basically just a notch filter, I think. Let's see. Yeah, it are two notch filters working together. Um, so when you use this particular filter, you can basically add a little bit of movement to your sound. really subtle but it really works well um the next one is a drum bus now this one is really interesting um you can basically use it to add some compression um filtering and saturation so let's add some compression to this drum let's add some saturation as well And I have this high pass filter. Works really well. Um, the next one is the filter made. Now the filter made is basically just a low pass filter and a high pass filter. And these two filters are mapped in such a way that when the low pass filter is at the maximum position and when the high pass filter is at the minimum position, um, the both filters are not turned on, so they are turned off right now, and as soon as I go away from that minimum position, the devices are turned on, and you can actually start hearing the filtering. So this one is really, really well, um, really, really good for using as a master filter, so you can put this on your master track and apply some subtle filtering to your entire track. For instance, right before a drop, you might want to add some high pass automation. And it really works really well. Um, the next one is the Haas effect. Now, the Haas effect is really simple. 
it's just one knob and it involves delaying the left and right signal from each other and by doing that you get a much fatter sound so this is without this is with one milliseconds of delay You can hear that that snare already became a lot bigger and when I bring this up to let's say 8 On drums it doesn't really sound that good um, I most of the times used it this on synths and basses to really fatten them up a lot um, The next device I've got is the pump it now the pump it is basically just a sidechain module. Um, you can change the amount of sidechaining by turning this knob. Um, you can change the speed by using that knob. Uh, yep. And you can change the shape with that knob. So that's really useful, um, great little tool. Um, then you've got the scratch it. Now the scratch it is really interesting. Listen. It sort of works like a scratching kind of thing. Um, when you automate this, you get something like this. So you can really hear how you can glitch up your sounds with this particular plugin. Um, it can mimic sort of like a DJ scratching effect, but it can also really add a lot of glitchiness to your tracks. So I use this one a lot. Um, it only has one knob, but other than that, it's really great. And especially if you combine it with the other particular plugins that I have, um, maybe put the Distortify before it and add some amp. Add a little bit of tube, maybe a little bit of highs, bring in some of the drive. Maybe add the destroy a tiny little bit. And I can even automate this, you know, if I want. I can say I want to automate this particular one right here. And let's do it like that. Let's see how that sounds. You can hear that really changes the sound. I mean, without these, we have a really simple drum loop. Add the distortion and then add the scratcher. And that way you can come up with really interesting things. Um, I've also got the sub bass saturate, um, which basically just a saturation module for your sub bass tracks. Um, I've got a synth bus EQ saturation sidechain compression. Um, use this mostly on my synth sounds. Works really, really well. And finally, I've got the mud finder. So for this one, the mud finder is a little bit different. Um, I use this for finding muddy frequencies in a mix. So what you can do, you have this frequency knob, and you can see that a really small band of frequencies is being sweeped through the frequency spectrum. With this EQ, you can find those muddy frequencies. Then I flip the switch, and it will flip over to the second EQ. Then I can... Cut that particular frequency out, and I can increase the bandwidth if needed. 
to make a wider cut. And that way, well, you basically end up with taking out the muddy frequencies without too much hassle and too much pain. And when I flip that switch again, you can see it goes back to that other EQ. I can fine tune it and the other one moves along with the frequency knob. Um, so this one works really well. Um, when it's flipped to this one, it also works like a really good notch filter, as you see. Um, yeah, I use that a lot. It's a really great tool to finding muddy frequencies. Um, when we do that, you know, you get something like this. It can also work like a really great filter in this one. Um, we'll add a little bit of subtle, subtle effects. Um, when I move the switch... Great little filter tool. Um, so these are the effects that you get as a VIP member um, of the Artifacts Studios website. You can register at www.artifacts-studios.com. Um, I'll put the link in the description box below this video. So if you liked any of these videos, please subscribe to my channel to see a lot more. Um, the past year has been a great year and I hope that next year is going to be just as well. Um, if you have any questions regarding this or other videos on my channel, please leave a comment below or tweet your questions at Artifact Studios on Twitter. Um, I'll get back at you within two days, three days, at least as soon as possible and give you a solid answer to your questions. Um, if you want to get feedback on your music, please come to my website, post your music on the forum and you might get some feedback from either me or other producers on my website. Um, if you want, get a VIP membership and you can get these effects and additional things. I'm going to keep expanding that VIP section throughout the upcoming years and there's going to be a lot more stuff to come. So keep an eye out for that. I'm also going to be updating my website a lot from now. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming up, a lot of great articles about music production and everything that comes with it. Um, as a music producer these days, you don't, um, you are not just a music producer, you're also a mastering engineer, mixing engineer. Um, most of the time, producers are also doing their own graphics, their own artwork, so you're also a designer. And because of all those things, I think it's really, really wise to write down an article about it. Um, I hope you like these videos and I'll see you next week. Thank you.